Hi, I'm Joe Walensky. I'm the program manager for Convey UX, which is Seattle's annual user experience conference. We've been doing it for the past six years, and it's coming up again March 11, 12, 13, and I get the chance to talk with our many presenters, and today I am fortunate to be speaking with Ash Banaszak. Hello, Ash. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, thanks. How are you? I'm pretty good. It's a fairly decent day here in Seattle at Blink UX's office on the on the waterfront. Where are you talking to us from? Um, I'm from Omaha, Nebraska, and it feels like Seattle here today. It's it's pretty damp. It's been damp for quite quite a long time. So, but we don't have the coast, so not as not as nice. Well, it's good to have you involved in the in the conference, and and, uh, and I want to uh, just start by. Uh, asking if you could uh, talk a little bit about your background and the types of things that you're involved in. Sure. So uh, my background is I've been in user experience field for a little under a decade now. I got my master's at Missouri S&T in information science with an emphasis in human computer interaction. And really in industry, I've done a wide variety of projects within Union Pacific Railroad. So I've kind of built my career around the railroad. Um, one of the interesting things about UP is we have a matrix style of project management. So with my group, we basically act as internal consultants or like a UX SWAT team that kind of comes in, gets some projects, um, sees that project through, and then goes on to different other projects. So I've worked in legal, I've worked in HR, I've worked in engineering, operations, uh, crew dispatching, train dispatching, you name it, pretty much have been all over the railroad, building stuff from mobile applications to uh, client server apps, web applications, and then customized stuff for or cranes and trains and that sort of thing. So I've got nice, nice background, a lot of different things at the railroad. And uh, so like, what are some of the things that, that make up a day in the life for you? Are there any uh, uh, things that you're regularly involved in? Uh, probably one of my favorite things is our field research. So we have specialized teams that will go down into the field. We'll do a lot of contextual inquiries. And so the weeks that I get to do that, probably my favorite weeks, uh, my, my usual day-to-day -day involves a lot of iterative design, um, talking with our project teams, meeting with our graphic designer, meeting with my other uh, members of my team and really iterating and breaking down each other's stuff and building it back up again. So that's kind of the exciting thing about my job is I get to work with the team, but I also get to be kind of uh, the leader on my own project. So. Yeah, you mentioned that, that you're in uh, Omaha, and I, it, it's been a long time since I been I was through there. In fact, I was really just in passing. Um, I was wondering um, what the uh, user experience community is like in, in your area uh, in terms of, uh, meetup groups or other kind of professional development sharing? Yeah, so we have uh, what we call Nebraska UX, which it basically encompasses Omaha, Nebraska, and then Lincoln, Nebraska, which is about 45 minutes uh, away from Omaha. And so we take turns hosting events back and forth. Um, my meetup uh, that I co-host with another uh, member, uh, Gene Petty, we have one about UX happy hour book club. So we pick a book, everybody reads it, then we come happy hour, discuss it, have a few drinks, talk about different industry stuff and how the book applies to work. So that's that's probably the most fun thing that I do for UX outside of work is is really just having some fun and talking about different uh, these different books that we we read. All right. Well, I, I have fun with the uh, ones that I organize, and I like going to them. It's a great way to meet people in the field. Uh, we're going to talk about your uh, session uh, in a few minutes, but is, is there uh, anything going on that has your uh, interest uh, either in work or outside of work? Yeah. Uh, recently, I went to a conference, and they were talking a lot about the Americans with Disability Act and accessibility uh, for websites. And that really got me thinking, there's not a ton of emphasis that we have in Union Pacific. You know, we check the box, but we don't have specific guidelines and things in place to really help our development teams really access that community. So that's something that I've been working with our internal component library team to build systems that are even more easily accessible. And so that way our folks can, uh, is that you or me? 
Oh, just just ignore it. Okay, sorry. Uh, that way, our folks have the building blocks that they need to really make applications that are accessible without even needing to try that hard. Because um, that's one of the things that developers, if you make it easy for them, a lot of times they'll just do it. Um, but accessibility is really easy to break. So getting that training out there. Yeah, well, I'm glad you're uh, getting getting involved in that. That's something that uh, I'm actively involved in. I manage, uh, help core organize the Seattle uh, accessibility meetup, and uh, it, there are a lot of gaps in it. And uh, you know, a lot of it ends up being dealt with on the compliance level. But uh, really, the biggest changes are when. Uh, people in the research and design uh, aspects of our profession can build that into the specifications so that it it just becomes part of the overall process. Okay. And uh, I w did want to uh, talk to you about your session and that's going to, uh, uh, that's going to be on the uh, second day of the conference and the title is uh, Designing for the Captive Audience. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your talk? Sure. So designing for the captive audience basically came about when I started working at Union Pacific. There were several projects that I either witnessed that UX wasn't a part of or that they brought us in either too late or they had a very weird perception of what user experience does. And there are a lot of myths that go around with designing for the captive audience, which essentially means internal users, people that are paid to use your software. So that's generally employees or customers that don't have a lot of options then have to pretty much use your stuff. So when I was looking over my career, I found there were a lot of myths that project managers have in their mind and developers have in their mind about when you're designing specifically for someone who is paid or forced to use your software, what you can do when designing it and, and that you don't necessarily need user experience and usability. And that's a big deal because you absolutely still need a good user experience because you're costing yourself money in different ways. Yes, people can't abandon your product because you're forcing them to use it, but there's a lot of things that they can do to minimize their use of the product, work around it, um, undermine it, or they're just gonna be trying to deal with it and they're handicapped. They're, they're you're basically cutting their knees out from under them. So that's, I said I had several different use cases that I've seen. And I've even added to it since I've present, uh, presented it to you for submission. I'm a perfectionist with my talk, so I'll keep adding and iterating just like I do with my job on that talk right up until the end. I like to get them just perfect. Well, I, I wanted to ask you a question about your, uh, you know, your work with the uh, railroad. Um, I think that's kind of an interesting area that I don't really have much knowledge about in terms of how UX is applied there. Is there anything that um, you find to be uh, uniquely challenging about that particularly particular industry or is it uh, still a lot of the, the same techniques that uh, might be used in other industries? I think there's a lot of the same, but I think one of the things that as soon as you asked me that question that really popped in my mind was some of our users, especially our folks that are agreement union folks that, you know, are run our trains, run our shops, they don't, a lot of them don't have smartphones, a lot of them don't use computers or any other technology aside from being in the workplace. So when you're dealing with a user group that is so blissfully ignorant of technology and not really wanting to work with it, it it does present a few challenges, especially about what you assume people know about technology, because there's a lot of there's a lot of symbols and iconography that we assume people know that you can't make that assumption necessarily with the user groups that I'm making. You can't make the assumption that they know what the little save disk means you, or the hamburger menu, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of things that that you see there that it's just for blissful ignorance of technology. Yeah, well, uh, I can certainly understand that, and uh, thanks for that observation. Uh, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to talk with me uh, for this little preview, and we'll look forward to seeing you in Seattle in March. Thanks. It's been a pleasure. Thanks a lot, Ash.